Now then, guys, I do hope that you're keeping well. As you can see on my desk, in the flesh, right here, I think I might be the first person to have one of these, is the new Seastar S30. And what a beautiful little device it is. I have to say, I've really been looking forward to this one, uh, as circumstances have changed in my own personal life. As you may know, I'm looking a touch more disheveled than usual, uh, and the reason is because I am more disheveled than usual. We've just welcomed home our first ever baby uh, to the family, a little baby boy. And I'm tired, so I'm not really looking forward to setting up huge telescopes and running complex sequences and things like that. I think I just want some time out under the sky to decompress, relax, and enjoy astronomy for what it is once again, which is something I've really enjoyed before now already. The C star just off camera. S50 that I've got also right here. It's kind of bigger, slightly older brother. I think I actually find this S30 a slightly more attractive proposition overall, though, because it's offering a wider field of view and newer technology. We are going to talk all about it, of course. I'm going to give you first impressions, um, what I actually thought about it, getting it out of the box for the very first time. How is it like to use the app? What's it like to use during the daytime? And as soon as I am possibly able, I promise I will bring you some night sky footage with this thing. Um, but the skies have just been so bad here in the UK. So that may have to wait uh, for the purpose of getting this first video out. But we are going to cover as much as we possibly can. Huge intro out of the way. Let's get into this thing. So I'm going to first talk to you about the differences between the S50 and the S30. So first off, it's using the newer 662 uh, internal sensor. So this is actually got two cameras built into it. It's got a wide field camera and a zoomed in heli camera, if you like. Whereas the older S50 was using an ASI 462, so it's an, an IMX 462, if you like, uh, which is still a nice little camera. It was a Starvis 1 sensor uh, and it did have amp glow and a slightly restrictive full well capacity. The main difference here is this is a little bit more sensitive. The 662 is Starvis 2, so you know it's the next generation Sony sensors. And it has no amp glow, which I think is a really neat thing. The C-Star already takes its own darks, uh, so you don't have to really worry about it too much as it takes them every session. But the less noise that you have to take out of an image in the first place, the better in my books. You know what I mean? It's just less you're going to have to deal with from the get-go. Uh, and as you can see, it's got much, much deeper full well capacity, which is always a boon. It's going to be far harder to saturate this sensor, meaning you've got access to more dynamic range. Quite simply, but everything else about it in terms of physical dimensions, the pixel pitch, uh, it's all really the same as the 462. It's just the the successor. It's the newer version, as ZWO are even saying themselves. Now, the interesting thing about this, whereas the S50 is 200 and 50 millimeters of focal length, so it actually punches in a little bit more um, tightly, if you will. So this is the green field of view right there. That's the C-Star S50 with the 462, 250 mil focal length, F5. I'm trying to shoot, let's say, the Pleiades right there. The red box is the C-Star S30. So because it's slightly more wide field, you are going to have access to some slightly bigger targets without having to run mosaics and things like that, or maybe unfavorable framings and things uh, of that nature. I think this is going to shape up to be really interesting, especially as we're getting into the winter season now, uh, where we're going to have stuff like, you know, the Pleiades, of course, as I'm demonstrating right here, the Orion Nebula. I think that could be fantastic to shoot through this little guy. Um, I'm certainly excited to give it a go as it happens, but there's so, you know, so many more options available to you with a wider field. Um, it's a double-edged sword, of course. You can't punch in quite so tight on smaller stuff, but I think, as you can see, it's, it's still going to be plenty visible for smaller targets like planetary nebulae, such as M27. That kind of thing. But anyway, it is what it is. I certainly find it very interesting for something of this nature, the wider field of view. I like the look of it. Now, in terms of what price it's coming in at, here in the UK, at least, uh, it should be, you know, rough price parity overseas too. Well, here on First Light Optics is available, of course, uh, 365 Astronomy, whatever you like, really. I will have affiliate links, by the way, down below for anybody who wishes to use them and help uh, help me support my now growing family. How about that? What a, what a thing to think of. Uh, it would be really, really gratefully received if you guys think about doing that. Um, 
just per an hour there. But yeah, 369 is what these things are coming in at, which is pretty amazing, I would say, given that if you want to just buy a 662 alone, I know you can use it on whatever you like and it's not built into a smart telescope, but just a 662 alone, the, the, the main imaging sensor is 200 pounds. So how the heck have they built all the rest of this? You know, a, a drive mode, an imaging computer, storage, a second camera, an apochromat lens system, and a tripod for 369. I think it represents really good value as it happens. And I, and I ain't just saying that. I, um, I'm impressed. It's, it's certainly not poorly built or anything like that either. In fact, I'm, I'm really impressed with the build quality. Uh, as compared, by the way, to the S50, slightly more highly priced, uh, slightly bigger device, of course, as well. Now, if I was going to choose one of these two to buy today, I would go for the S30. I like the uh, the features of that wider field of view. It, it really appeals to me and what I want from a smart telescope, but I'm not bashing the C-Star S50 by any means. I still have use and enjoy mine regularly. So uh, yeah, don't be feeling bad. If you just bought yourself an S50, it's still absolutely fantastic. Now, anyway, I want to jump on, uh, of course, and switch over to the unboxing experience and things like that for you. I'm going to go through that kind of thing with this. But overall, I'll tell you right now, my first impressions of this are extremely positive. Uh, as I've said, and as it is always the case with my uh, my videos on this channel, I'm not being paid to say any of this. Uh, I just want to give you what I think to stuff. I am a human being. I do like things. I do dislike things. Well, this is certainly not something that I dislike. I think it's really cool uh, and it's right up my alley. So yeah, dive into the next part of the video anyway. Just a really quick one as well. I will be making accessories for this as I do have a print farm. I'm capable of 3D design. I've made parts for the Seastar S50, which are the most popular on the market by a mile. I've sold thousands of them uh, and it's been a really, really wonderful way to help support me and this channel and now my family of course too um so yeah i want to say thank you by the way to anybody who's purchased those accessories and if you are interested in looking out for more check the links down below and i'll get on with making them designing them and testing them as soon as i possibly can all right then guys so in front of me right here i have the new c star s30 from zwo let's dive straight into this unboxing i want to give you my first impressions as we go through so it's an attractive matte box uh, on the side right here we've got some of the features outlined so clean crisp low noise images so it's a triplet apochromat dual camera lens double the fun so uh, you can switch between panoramic and close-up views in real time a little bit like uh, the dwarf kind of system if you're familiar with that uh, i really enjoyed that intelligent image post processing so with a single tap it's claiming right there you can process your images get them ready for share Built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, dual mode, reliable connection, very good. Smart control via mobile app, that's probably one of the most important things, of course, with a product of this nature. And there is a global astro community, of course, as well. A little bit of a warning, don't look at the sun through this thing unless you're using the included solar filter on here. We've got a little bit of an outline of the included parts. And on this side, another small... Uh, little set of graphics outlining exactly what it can do. So solar photography, lunar photography, planetary photography, deep sky objects photography, and scenery. Now, if we dive in to the unboxing experience, it lets us know the, I'll just pull this back so you can hopefully see, set up the tripod on level ground for stability. For the first power on, press the power button for one second and release, then press and hold for two seconds. So it's just like waking it up from battery storage mode. I assume, and then subsequent power ons are a simple press and hold. Open the C Star app, follow the instructions. Simple as you like. So, take this part off, stow that to one side. We have instruction manuals. These are, of course, V1. I think this is probably one of the very first people I had to get my hands on one of these things. So, a huge thanks to ZWO again for sending this over for me to take a look at. And I have to say, I really like the look of that. Wow, it's quite dinky. Um, what an attractive little device. So I expect this to be kind of, I don't know, flimsy feeling, but it's 
really sturdy. It feels well made. I like the uh, the frosted plastic on here. This has got a uh, cover on the side. Uh, who knows what that'll be like when I've peeled it off. But looking around the device, that is seriously attractive. We've got a USB-C right there, by the way, so you can supply supplementary power to this thing. And a little door underneath here, if I can... I can't, I've got no nails, unfortunately. Um, but I'll find out what's underneath that for you after. Tripod port, reset button, and appropriate Wi-Fi information too. Now the rest of the parts in here, let's just see if that's safe there, and it is. So a little accessories box, it seems. Let's see what's inside here for you. Crikey. Right. So, USB cable, that's pretty self-explanatory, a divider, a solar filter, really nice to see that. I had a lot of fun with the Seastar S50 to be honest, and still do, using it for solar photography, it's one of my favourite things. And here is your little tripod, really good to see actually. That's a little aluminium tripod, so it's not a, a cheap old, you know, plastic thing, it's actually you can hear it on my desk, it's solid as a rock, that little thing. So I'm going to go ahead now, get this thing hooked up, one on top of the other, and go through setup uh, and true first impressions. All right, guys, so I just want to talk you through what it actually looks like to use this thing within the app. Hopefully you can see a screen recording of what I am able to view on my screen right here. Um, we can talk a little bit about the actual experience of this thing uh, when using it for the first time. So I will say the setup was incredibly straightforward basically just connect up to the wi-fi network that it creates itself uh, you'll find that and it'll just actually do its initial setup via bluetooth so you just press a little confirmation button underneath and that's it it's set up it's ready to go uh, and it'll register it register itself online rather handily now obviously you would see that's going to come only partly charged mine was about 60 percent or something like that i've used it a little bit since that's good it's a good thing for lithium batteries you don't want to keep them you know topped off especially when they're going to be potentially kept for a while in shipping and storage warehouses and whatnot so good to see that um, it comes with quite a large amount of storage available for you as you can see 58.3 gigabyte total available 7.7 .7 gigabyte used you've got options for you know firmware update through here which will do automatically when firmware is available the first time i started this by the way it was talking to me in Chinese and I'm sure that will change of course but it didn't matter uh, at all really as you don't need to listen to what it's saying to set it up the app is all in English you can choose sound modes we want it on loud for backyard use maybe low or mute if you're taking this somewhere dark maybe camping or a star party something like that you got focus options in here so the default starting position for focus on stars that's really useful for the telecamera the wide field camera is pretty much par focal just from about a couple of feet away through to infinity of course so that's really really nice to see it does have an anti dew feature uh, feature so it will heat up that front element very slightly and stop any dew forming on it which is extremely important if you want to use these things in any kind of a you know high humidity high dew formation environment and you can choose to watermark your images too should you wish now we've got advanced features available on just this going through the basic settings right here of course the exposure length 10 20 or 30 seconds i haven't had the chance to test this out on the skies just yet uh, but i will say that it feels quite sturdily built so if the guiding uh, tracking accuracy rather is anything like the C Star S50. Given that this is a wider field of view, I don't really think it would be too uh, out of the question to use 30 second exposures on this, should you wish. For most stuff, but these do have incredibly low read noise cameras, so in most cases, 10 seconds is going to be more than enough. But just putting that out there as a bit of extra information for you. You can alter your basic settings, such as go to. Uh, um, image enhancement starting straight away after the go to uh, you can save each frame that's off by default i want that on in case i want to restack things up myself you can go through calibration of your compass and level uh, really useful stuff of course as this is an alt azimuth tracking system it does need to be level um 
You don't have to put it down in any particular orientation, by the way. Just plonk it down and it'll figure everything else out itself from its internal compass. Really nice to see. If we go back to the main C star window right here, you can see you've got three main options. So stargazing mode, you click that first. You can view, you know, through tonight's best things that will recommend for your location. Uh, you can go through a lot of these. Um, and it's as simple as, you know, choosing something you want to shoot and basically tapping on it it'll give you a read up of the object which is really 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 useful i think uh especially if you want to use this as such as a learning device or a way to you know maybe foster an interest in a younger generation as well as an older generation i find this stuff super interesting to read because you know who knows everything about this really i certainly don't so i'm finding myself learning right away with it which is great but especially from the perspective of becoming a new father especially something like this i think it's a really positive thing to have uh, available around if you do want to share this kind of thing with your children which i certainly i'm going to want to do um but yeah as i say a bit of information about things really important and it's as simple as tapping go gazing and it will take you to it and you know it will do the rest it's really really seamless i have to say the c-star software is absolutely fantastic at this point so it's a fully fledged thing you can choose tons of targets no shortage whatsoever you can choose what type of target you want to go after be it galaxies nebulas clusters messier objects ic catalog ngc sh2s you name it it's all on there so you know you can see it's like through your list of galaxies it's a huge huge list of course um you can choose solar system objects that's also on there you can skip through that straight away and go and do things manually yourself too, should you wish. Solar system mode is going to bring up just those solar system objects straight away for you for easy selection, so they're not buried in among all the uh, you know the deep sky stuff as well. It does, of course, have the sky atlas, which I really enjoy. It gives you a uh, kind of a stellarium-like view, if you will, and also a predicted field of view from your little c star s30 so you can frame things up custom with this so rather than just accepting what the default go-to values are you know which is usually going to be centered on an object um maybe for example i don't know this is not a very good example but let's say we've got m13 right here maybe you don't want it absolutely perfectly centered maybe you want to be off center for some reason and focusing instead on the nearby galaxy Bad example, but the, the point being, you can select any sort of framing that you want. Just tap the go to button down at the bottom. It'll do the rest. It'll put it in there at your chosen framing. We have more recommendations about what's going on in the sky right now. So the Geminid meteor shower, the Jupiter opposition, the largest full moon in 2024. You know what I mean? It's, it's a fully fleshed app. It's telling me the the visibility tonight, the moon phase, the weather for my location, all within the app. I really like that. Uh, and another cool feature that I like, especially about these slightly wider field telescopes as well, scenery mode. So it doesn't have to necessarily just be scenery as such, uh, particularly if you add perhaps um, an area where birds regularly go to feed, something like you know a bird table or a bird bath or whatever. Even in your garden, you could have some fun with this thing by, you know, pointing close on something. So let's just, I'm slewing around inside my observatory right here, for example. So I'm just going to point across um, maybe my back wall, if you'll just bear with me for one second. So I've got a few things stacked up there. So you can see you can navigate around using the little joystick and it's, it's, it's sensitive. If it's too fast for you, you can slow things down move very slowly and predictably for fine tuning you can also if you wish use one of its smart features where you might want to tap and then tap go and it'll align itself square onto whatever you selected so you know let's say that green ring right there on the uh, the evo guide that's sat on that shelf at the opposite end of the observatory now this is just what we're we gonna say two and a bit meters away two and a half meters away or so so we can see clearly on the main uh camera the sorry the wide field camera that this is in focus as i mentioned this is power focal from just about well a couple of feet away what are we a few feet away right here my hands in focus just about right out to infinity uh whereas the main camera 
if you can switch to that right now you can see that is out of focus and i don't think that will focus anywhere and maybe down to like 12 meters or something like that at a guess that would be your minimum which is going to be fine for nature nature observations but not indoor kind of photography if you will which is obviously not what this is designed for but you do have ai powered selection features um such as frame target mode where you can drag a box over something on the screen and you know have it kind of so like i'm just selecting right there and it would track that if it was a recognizable object uh which is really neat again maybe you're selecting a bird or a person or who knows what it might be you know a boat out at sea or something and it can do that for you um you can also use different modes on this just scenery mode so you can take videos should you wish you can slew during that as well hello <laughs> um but yeah it's, it's all just it's seamless it works well it saves everything uh device side and i think you've also got a, like a c star app side control as well um storage rather so if i just select on my today you can see i took this out a little bit earlier and i was playing around just taking photographs of nearby um aerials and things like that i wanted to test its focus features we can talk about that a little bit later but you can also see what's stored on the c star itself and it also does integrate with the c star s52 so this is the last time i used my s50 i'm um, just shooting things like this you know what i mean the fish head nebula right there and a bit of m33 that's also on the app for you so if you have both like i do they're all going to be working from within this one app which i think is really really neat um so that's a brief overview i would say of the app itself it really is a well thought out app i have no complaints whatsoever and as i said one of my favorite things about it i i think is one of the opportunities to actually learn a little bit more about the night sky rather than particularly taking you know the most beautiful picture or something like that which is still going to be able to make, take nice pictures i'm not knocking it for what it is uh, but let's say if you you are you know you are out there on your own or maybe with a child or a grandchild or something like that and you want to just show them a little bit more about what's up there not immediately visible it would be nice to have them choose something they like the look of maybe read a little bit about it go to it and just enjoy it together and i think that's something uh, that in a package like this is un beatable and i really do mean that I, I think these smart telescopes have that sort of thing stitched up it's beautiful uh, i i really like the idea of it i have to say uh maybe i'm coming across all gooey because i'm just you know um welcoming my own son here but yeah i think it's a, it's a nice feature and i am certainly hoping to make use of it as soon as possible so uh, that's about that let's go into the next part of the video all right, guys, so I'm out here with the Sea Star. I'm oh, just on a little table right now, and I thought that might be a decent way to show you scenery mode so you can get an idea of what this thing actually moves like. Here you can see a hand for scale, if you like. It's incredibly light and portable, and actually it feels really well made. I've got to say, I had reservations. Given the price point of this thing and the amount of stuff they're packing in there, I don't know how they've done it really and got a good feeling device nothing's you know squeaky weak or anything like that it's it just feels good it feels good uh, i already have very really good first impressions of this so uh, hopefully you're going to be able to see what i can see on the app screen right here so i've just turned it as i say into scenery mode let's try and find something we can take a look at so uh, there's a distant tree over in a neighbor's yard i don't really want to be pointing at people's windows or anything like that <laughs> of course but i'll just take a snap with the wide field camera i'm going to switch now to the the much more zoomed in main camera if you want and i'm going to try to tap autofocus and see what it gets on a moving object like this this is probably quite challenging okay so autofocus completed and it looks good to me i've got to say it definitely looks good i'm going to try a snap or two um given how windy it is i'm just going to see if there's anything stationary that i can point it at might be a bit more simple so there's a building at the end of my street over here so let's work our way down to the corner as i say i don't want to be looking for his windows or anything um so i've got it pointed at roughly the corner of that building hopefully you can see on the app so we'll take a wide field shot 
snap in then to the, the tele lens if you want. Gonna click autofocus again as it's clearly just slightly out. Um, this is a good 80 meters away, something like that I would say. And it's crisp, do you know what I mean? It really is a lovely crisp view. We are losing light out here unfortunately, but it seems to be adjusting itself really nice. I haven't had to touch um, at all, right when I said I didn't want to point at someone's windows, that's the first thing I did. So it's a little twitchy with telecamera on, uh, you know, like fast mode, but if you want, you can tap and switch into slow mode, which brings those movements much more in line for you. So uh, let's say, if, you know, I want to point uh, this lead flashing or whatever not sure why you would but <laughs> i'm struggling of course are things that are suitable to shoot um then you're gonna have no problem getting yourself lined up basically speaking now it looks like of course this is a little bit closer to us ever so slightly this this part of the building so we'll try another autofocus see what it looks like it does so this is with a very bright light in the field of view too, security light. Yeah, it's nailed it where I'm looking. And with that closer foreground stuff in there, if I tap instead on the background and press autofocus on that tree, uh, is it able to determine the difference, you know, where I actually want it to focus? It is. So you can see it's now focused on the tree and left the foreground stuff slightly out. So another quick snap on that that's really good to see so you know you can just pick whatever you want and it knows what it's doing it's just like zone select uh, autofocus on a dslr that kind of thing basically i really like to see the, the you know the ability to swap between that 16 by 9 um landscape mode wide field camera right there it's pretty good it's pretty wide you can certainly see a lot of stuff and i'm very happy with the image quality too if we try it now for a test on something much closer, so I'll point at uh, what we got, a neighboring, on my granddad's roof actually, uh, a neighboring little um, aerial. So I'll turn it back onto fast mode. And then we will hopefully be pointed in a moment. It's all right, got the aerial, I'll do a fine adjustment. So that'll be nice. Let's see if it can autofocus on something this close. And it certainly can. Let's see. And yeah, we're looking, looking pretty damn nice. <laughs> so uh, crispy focus, good to see. It's, it's impressive. I'm seeing no fringing and things. It's not very bright. Of course, but it is an apochromat, so we shouldn't see much in the way of fringing anyway. Uh, but this is the difference, of course, between the wide field right there, the same thing. The white balance looks different uh, between these two, I will say that, of course. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. I can't wait to test this thing now under the, uh, the actual night skies. That's the next thing. We don't have much forecast tonight but we might have a little bit if i do i will absolutely include it in this video but if not i'm afraid you'll have to wait for a future video on that but you can absolutely expect to see more content from this little device coming your way well then guys i just want to say a huge thank you to you for watching i hope to share much more content from this thing actually uh, as soon as i'm possibly able because i really do firmly believe that astronomy should be accessible to all you know it's up there for everybody to enjoy it shouldn't just be you know only the elite view with tens of thousands of pounds to drop on equipment to be able to enjoy the night sky is that's just not fair um if you can afford something like this 369 pounds over in the uk you can get stuck into uh, and the barriers to entry are incredibly low it is so accessible uh, i can't think of an easier way actually to get started in astrophotography astronomy in general uh, than something like this and you could certainly take this anywhere you want you could store it in your car go on holiday things like that it would fit in a backpack no problem because it's so dinky and light you know what i mean and it's, it's robust i wouldn't be worried about it getting smashed up in there or anything like that obviously don't have it rattling around with balls of wine or whatever you want to choose to carry with you but you know it's it's well made uh and overall i'm impressed with it 
And as I say, I do want to reiterate the fact that I know it might seem like I'm being overwhelmingly positive about these things, but I just can't think of an alternative product that comes comes close, really. I really liked the Dwarf. I want to say that. Oh, there, the Dwarf, too. Uh, this is... I think it's a cut above. Do you know what I mean? In terms of how it's built, how it's made. Um, it shows. ZWO, they are the leaders with these things, as far as I'm concerned. And it shows. It's a nice product. It really is. And I openly, already, I'm going to recommend this out there. Because we know how well supported the S50 has been. Why would this not also be... Uh, so I'm just anticipating where this is going to go and how much fun I'm going to be able to get from it. Anyway, I've gone on at length, haven't I? So uh, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to go ahead and get back inside to my uh, <laughs> my partner and child now, as they'll be uh, they'll be needing me, no doubt. And I just want to say thank you very much indeed for your support. I really do appreciate the fact that I'm able to do this as my job, um, and it's all because of you guys. So hand on heart, thank you, thank you. Thank you, uh, and I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Look after yourselves, and I'm wishing you the very best for some clear skies. Take care, guys.